Hello everyone! As you know from my previous videos, uh, Tal and Nejmedinov played four games altogether, four official games. Uh, you already seen two games on my channel. Uh, I will put a link to those games in the description below. In the first video, I said something more about uh, Rashid Nejmedinov and his uh, and his uh, acquaintance with uh, Tal and uh, their mutual relationship and and things like that. Uh, so I don't want to talk about it uh, more in this video uh, but I do want to tell you that of those four games that they played I consider this one to be the most beautiful uh, because when Tal and Nejmedinov uh, meet over the board uh, it doesn't matter if it's the opening the middle game or the end game uh, there is always magic on the board as you will see in this game so the game was played in 1959 it was played in Moscow and Nejmedinov as in all four games has the white pieces so let's see the game uh, Rashid opens with e4 and c5, the Sicilian defense by Tal. Knight to f3, e6, d4, uh, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and a6. We have the Khan variation. Uh, knight to c3, queen to c7, and bishop to d3. Uh, we have knight to c6, and Rashid plays bishop to e3, now transposing into the Bastrikov variation of the Taimanov. Uh, knight to f6 by Tal, Rashid castles. And here Tal has a couple of options, he can simply go bishop b7, castles and uh, continue the game maybe with b5, b5, bishop b7. Uh, but Tal goes for knight to e5. And it seems like uh, a weird move at least, you know, you already played with that piece. And uh, the light square bishop doesn't seem like such a powerful piece to capture. Uh, but okay, uh, he played knight to e5 and we have h3, not allowing any knight to g4 ideas b5 by Tal, preparing bishop to b7, and f4 now. Uh, knight to c4, now going for the dark square bishop, and this is a, a, a more powerful bishop in this variation. So bishop captures on c4, Rashid parts with the bishop pair, uh, queen captures on c4, and here Tal, Tal has some ideas of pushing b4, and uh, a move like e5 will be met with b4. So Rashid plays queen to d3, he, off uh, he offers a trade of queens. Uh, d5 by Tal, and we have e captures on d5. Now Tal exchanges queens, queen captures on d3, c captures on d3, and b4. And already you can see that Tal, Tal has the upper hand. Uh, this knight has to move, uh, these pawns are doubled, uh, Tal is ready to capture this pawn when the c3 knight moves. So knight to e4, and we have knight captures on d5. Uh, we have bishop to d2, uh, getting the bishop out of the way as the knight was attacking it. And here Tal played a5, and there really wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't necessary. Uh, he played a5 to give the b4 pawn further protection and is preparing bishop to a6 to go for this uh, weak d3 pawn. But there is time for this, the d3 pawn isn't going anywhere, a move like g6, bishop to g7 uh, would have been better to control this strong diagonal. Uh, but okay, he played a5 and this is met with rook to c1. Uh, bishop to a6, going for the d3 pawn, and here Rashid plays rook f to e1, uh, showing Tal that the d3 pawn wasn't really that worth it. Uh, if Tal were to capture this pawn with bishop captures on d3, uh, f5 is coming. And now, after bishop captures, rook captures, uh, the e6 pawn is attacked three times, you don't really have a way of stopping this. Even if you play knight to f6 to kick the rook, uh, rook to e2, and now rook to d8 to attack the knight, uh, knight is coming to b5, again you have a, a double attack on the e6 pawn, also knight to c7 check is coming with a triple attack on the e6 pawn. So you cannot uh, grab this pawn in any way. And uh, the d3 pawn is uh, much uh, less important than the strong e6 pawn. So after rook f to e1, Tal decided to go for g6, preparing to develop the bishop, uh, but now comes the magic. Here Rashid plays f5. And it's a very interesting idea. Why would you play f5 in this position? Well, okay, obviously, uh, if you play e captures on f5, this is terrible, since knight, capture, knight to f6 check, uh, king to d8 is only move, and now rook to e8, this is checkmate. So this is pretty obvious, you're not going to capture with the e pawn. Uh, but uh, if you capture with the g pawn, this is actually much better uh, for Tal. For example, knight to c5, you simply capture, rook captures, you can freely castle. And okay, Rashid does have this knight captures on f5 move, but now comes bishop captures on d3. And it's a much better position for Tal, uh, he's up, up a pawn, and uh, you know, this is, this is very much playable. Uh, but after f5, uh, Tal got the idea that he would like to play bishop to g7. Uh, with the idea of uh, 
developing the bishop with tempo on the knight uh, on d4. And he thought, okay, after the knight moves, I will only then play g captures on f5. But this is where Rashid tricked him. Uh, here Rashid played f6, and Tal, I'm pretty sure Tal didn't consider this move, as it's it's, it's not a good move, but uh, Rashid plays it. Uh, so he's given up a pawn. Tal captures it, knight captures on f6. Uh, here comes knight to d6 with check by Rashid, uh, king to e7, and now comes the... <laughs> the amazing uh, Nejmedin of knight captures on f7. Uh, so what do you do here? I mean, the rook is attacked, you obviously, you obviously have to capture it, uh, there's a double attack on d6 pawn, so king captures on f7, and now rook to c7 check. So what do you do here? Uh, king to g8, this is actually the only good move. Uh, knight captures on e6, and uh, although Rashid sacrificed a piece, he is already threatening rook captures on g7 checkmate. Uh, so, knight to e8. This is the only good move for black, and Tal plays it. He's defending the g7 pawn, the, the g7 bishop, uh, and now comes rook to d7, as uh, the knight was attacking the, the rook. Uh, bishop to f6, and already this is what happens when you play against Nezhmetinov. This is a perfectly fine position for black, and black has many ways to continue this game. For example, you can play h6 uh, to, to make some room for the king, you can also play h5, uh, a more direct way would be to play, for example, bishop to b5, you kick the rook from the 7th rank, uh, only then you play h6 or h5, Do doesn't really matter. Uh, but after this rook to d7 move, uh, Tal played bishop to f6, uh, probably, <clears throat> I, I, I don't really know why. It's very hard to imagine why Tal played bishop to f6. There probably is a reason to it. Uh, if any of you can find a good reason for this uh, move, what, what's the idea behind bishop f6, uh, feel free to share in the comments. But this loses instantly. Uh, it loses to only one move and Rashid finds this move. It's rook to f1. And now Tal is in deep trouble. Uh, the immediate threat, of course, is if you, if you move the bishop uh, anywhere, for example, I don't know, uh, you play something like... I don't even know what Tal wanted to do with this bishop. Let's say you, you capture the pawn, uh, you get rook to f8 checkmate. Uh, but even if you don't, uh, there's really nothing you can play. If you play bishop b5 to attack the rook now, uh, then comes rook captures on f6. And now there is no defense. It's either rook to g7 checkmate. Uh, if you, For example, if you capture this rook, it's this rook to g7 checkmate. And if you capture this rook, then it's this rook to f8 checkmate. So there is no defense. It's mate in one. Uh, regardless of what black plays. So after rook to f1, it's 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 game over, basically. Uh, knight to g7 was played by Tal, but now comes rook captures on f6. Now Nejmedinov uh, got his piece back, he's up a pawn, but none of that really matters, as his position is so active. Uh, Tal's king is on g8, <coughs> the, rook <coughs> uh, the rook is on h8, uh, the rook can never enter the game. So knight captures on e6, this was the only move for Tal. Uh, rook captures on e6, and uh, those white rooks are extremely active, it's very hard to play this. Uh, bishop to b5, now comes rook to c7, still not allowing the king to enter the game. Uh, h5, this had to be played, you have to give up the g6 pawn uh, to maybe, maybe be able to activate your rook on h8. Uh, but rook to g6 check, king f8, now bishop to h6 check, uh, king to e8, and rook to e6 check. King to d8 by Tal, and now rook to c5, with a tempo on the bishop here. Uh, king to d7, attacking the rook, now rook comes to b6, now the bishop is attacked twice. Uh, bishop captures on b3, Tal grabs a pawn, but uh, doesn't really matter much here in this position. Bishop to f4 is played, uh, threatening rook c7, rook uh, d6, depends on what black plays actually. Uh, rook h to f8. Tal manages to activate the h8 rook, but it's uh, it's too late. Rook to d6 is played. Uh, king to e7. Now rook to c7 check. Uh, king to e8. And here we have rook uh, bishop to g5. Uh, the threat, of course, is rook to e7, and this comes with checkmate. So rook to f1 check. King to h2. And now bishop to b1. Uh, getting all of the pieces out of some nasty discoveries uh, Rashid might have. And there are actually a lot of winning moves here. Uh, rook to e6 is winning, uh, rook to e7 check is winning, but, uh, sorry. But there is one move that finishes the game instantly, and Rashid, of course, finds it. 
uh, it's rook to h6 and in this position uh, Mikhail Tal resigned the game so what's the idea <clears throat> uh, the idea is of course rook to h8 checkmate there is no way to stop this and uh, if you try rook to f8 to prevent this idea then simply rook to e6 is checkmate because now you've blocked f8 <laughs> the only escape square for the king so yeah uh, this is the third game I've shown you, the third official game between Mikhail Tal and Rashid Nezhmedinov. Uh, so, so, so far uh, the result is 3-0 for Rashid Nezhmedinov, there is only one more game left. Uh, I will eventually show this game as well. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Frederick Marx for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. And uh, what, do, <clears throat> what do you guys think? Is it, uh, is it finally time that uh, FIDE... Uh, awards Rashid Najmedinov with the honorary Grandmaster title, uh, but they're probably never gonna do it. But so you know, uh, as I always say, it's uh, for Najmedinov. It's uh, better to be uh, a legend who never became a Grandmaster than for a lot of players to be Grandmasters who never became legends. So yeah, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Like I said, there will be a link in the description below to both of the previous games, Tal vs. Nezhmetino. Be sure to check those out. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.